Olive is waiting so patiently for her goodbye treat. Yes, you ready? Set, set. <gasps> okay. Oh, girl. Hi, Olive Pop. Okay, so I'm documenting my bad decision to go thrifting when I don't need to. Isn't that the dilemma of a reseller? It's not even a good time to go thrifting. It's Saturday at five o'clock which I tend to stay away on the weekends. But I just, you know, I have the itch. I was watching YouTube and people thrifting and uh, it gets me every time. So I guess I have to stay away from those videos for a little bit. I don't even know where I'm gonna go. Like I have a few Goodwills I'm thinking. Thing is I'm meeting my friend this week to go thrifting and I'm thinking we're gonna hit these two. So I'm like, well, should I go there before? Cause like if we go later in the week, obviously there's gonna be some new stuff. Should I go to the one we're probably not gonna go to? Should I go to Last Chance? maybe after because they close later. I think I think I know what I'm gonna go to, so I'll see you guys there. Oh, I didn't say who I am. Hi, I'm Riley, a Rouse Theft did over on Instagram and Poshmark. I'm a full-time reseller. I sell people's junk on the internet for a living, and I'm assuming you do too, or maybe not full-time, but you know, you sell people's junk on the internet too to make money. Made it, and this is not even the one I was expecting to go to. Like this one wasn't even on the list of an option, but it actually only took me, I don't know, eight minutes to get here so let's go and see what we find so i'm not gonna lie this trip was not very good and i was not expecting it to be very good i was hopeful but again it's a saturday evening and i just tend to not go to the thrift stores on the weekends because that's when the high schoolers are out i mean it is summertime although actually today as of the recording of this voiceover our school district they went back so by teenagers on the weekdays but anyway usually like through the school year the teenagers are there the parents are there with their kids and people who work you know it's just more busy so this was my first find it was a babaton jump no body suit body suit <laughs> and it was half off so i grabbed it and upon closer inspection it was stained so i had to leave it i think i probably could have sold this for between 20 and like 24 dollars if i had picked it up in good condition so because this day of thrifting was kind of lackluster, later in the video I do actually include some clips of myself and my sister thrifting later in the week where we found some more exciting stuff. But I started, after I checked those few front racks, I started over here in the dresses. And prices are just getting so high at our Goodwills in Illinois, Chicagoland area that I'm considering doing like the rest of the year only shopping at the bins. So this old Maeve anthropology dress, probably from like 2010, they wanted $9 for, so that was an easy pass. I don't even know if I would have grabbed that at the bins. I do find a lot of Lulu's dresses this day, but Lulu's isn't doing as well for me as it used to. So this one is pretty basic and priced at $8. I would only pick that one up really cheap. This one I would also pick up if it was cheaper but they wanted $13 for this Lulu's dress. So if you're gonna buy Lulu's, I would this style 100% stay away from. It's like probably from like 2014, a like t-shirt dress. Nobody wants those Lulu's pieces anymore. Their newer tags are like small cursive ones. So if you find the small cursive Lulu's tag, I would look at it. I only pick up their like formal wear and really special cocktail dresses these days. Or if it's really cheap at the bins, I might grab it. Whoever was pricing these pieces decided that they were really good because they zip tied all of them and priced them at a minimum of ten dollars this madewell piece was half off so it would have been five dollars but i actually have this in my closet someone altered the sleeves there that would have been easy to just take out the stitching so if it was good i would have grabbed it but i have it in my closet i got it at the bins and it's like an extra extra small and it's been sitting forever and that one was an extra small so for five dollars i passed it i found this slightly newer athleta dress it was half off for four dollars and i was like what the heck is wrong with it because it's half off athleta hat something has to be wrong with it but i didn't see anything so i grabbed it got it home photographed it there's a pen mark on the sleeve so i priced it lower if you're saying like why don't you return it our goodwills don't do returns so it's four dollars whatever hopefully i can make like a six dollar profit on it and just sell it lower since it's flawed i checked comps on this royal robins dress because it was four dollars and that is strictly a bins pickup it wasn't even worth paying four dollars for that is a brand i don't have you know a lot of familiarity selling I found this Eliza J dress. Eliza J, I went through a period where I was like, it's not selling, I don't want it. But then I started selling again, I don't know. I like the style, it's a 
newer style. It was $8. I grabbed it. So this is a formal wear bridesmaids brand birdie gray. I've actually never sold it. They wanted $8 for it. So I was like, oh my gosh, let me check this. And it was pretty stained. So I put it back. That is very common with bridesmaids dresses that I find at Goodwill. They are usually pretty stained. So that's a bummer. But I do want to try out that brand. So maybe the next time I find it at last chance discounted, I will pick it up and give it a try. Bridesmaids dresses can be good, but you can also sit on them for a little bit since you're really waiting for the right buyer. I got really excited for a second when I found this Rachel Parcel dress for $8. This is a brand that is sold at Nordstrom. I think it's a blogger brand. Anyway, then I found that someone did a really bad like self-alteration job. So I left that behind because I didn't want to deal with it. Maybe if it was half off, I would have grabbed it and tried to see if I could see more of it. But honestly, I had no clue what this person did with this dress. So I just left it. I was like, Meh, no, thank you. And now we're back to just, you know, sorting through the stuff. I liked this Altered State dress, but Altered State doesn't sell for me and it was stained. So I did pick up this ASOS dress for $10, which is more than I usually want to spend on ASOS. But I feel like it's, this is new with tags and I feel like I can sell it for at least $50. It's a very pretty satin dress. It'd be perfect to wear to a wedding. And then I was super excited to find this piece. It is Sabo skirt. Uh, they have another name, but I can't think of it right now. I've only found it once and sold it once. And it was a very popular item for the time I had it. I got this home and realized it's flawed, of course. So I have to wash it and then I have to also do a repair to a seam. If I'd noticed those things, I would have left it, but uh, hopefully it will sell for over $30. Then I found these Patagonia shorts, which were miraculously, miraculously only priced at $4.99. I'm keeping those for myself. And then another miraculous find, this Dooney and Burke purse for $7. I have no clue why this like was not priced up or why they didn't pull it to put online, but I grabbed it and I sold it in a week-ish. Full price for $50. So super happy with this find. Then I found this purse brand that I've sold before, uh, Lieber's kind. I think it's German. I totally butchered that. But they had this price at $15 and it was pretty stained. So I left that behind. Like actually really stained. I can't believe they wanted $15 for that. But in good condition, I think that would have sold for $40 or more. I'm not a purse girly, so that was about it for the purse section. Making my way over to the top. I found this Babaton shirt that was pretty stained, so stuck that back in there, and they wanted $7. It's really hard not to go to Goodwill when you get the urge, but I'm telling you, I really think I need to try out thrifting only at the bins for a couple months, and you know, maybe last chance, because last chance is like easier to find inventory at when it's on sale, 80% off, it's like the same price as Goodwill. I liked this J. Jill shirt, it was $7, not worth it. Barbour, I feel like that... I mean, really ugly, but that brand is like a coat brand, right? And they wanted $10 for that. I literally don't know how they knew that brand. I I don't know. Guys, I don't know what they're doing with the pricing these days. I found this We The Free shirt, and I don't love selling We The Free, but it was half off, so it was $3. And uh, those like little marks, those will come out easily. I already have this listed in brown, so it'd be really easy for me to list. And the other option is I could take it to like Crossroads, and they'd probably give me like $8 for it, trading credit, and uh, that'd be a quick profit that way. I did also end up grabbing this American Eagle flannel because it was half off at $3.50, which pretty much leaves no room for profit, but I made some bad choices you know we're going into fall so hopefully it will sell for like $13 oh my gosh do as I say not as I do do not pay that much for an American Eagle flannel so I grabbed this weird shirt for myself um just a new summer pajama shirt oh my god we're going out of summer though it was half off like literally this random swim team shirt they wanted seven dollars for I don't get you goodwill I don't then I found this Grayson shirt, which is definitely one of my better finds of the day. Upon Googling, this brand is related to Frank and Eileen, which is another expensive button-up shirt brand that has a good resale value. So I did grab that shirt. Then I found this shirt, which was half off. So it was $2.50, Salt Life, and it does sell on Poshmark, but this is probably a much better bins find because it's going to sell for like $13. And guess what? The armpits were stained. So yeah, that was a bummer. I was pretty excited to find this 
this simply shirt for half off 350 but again upon inspecting it was stained but at least i caught this stain and put it back I found two anthropology blazers this was the first one i thought it was cute it's definitely older because it's 11 c's but it was like a maroon velvet. I thought it could still do well. It was $8. I really considered getting it. I couldn't find any comps on it. And I just, I left it behind because I didn't want to sit on it for a year and a half for it to sell for $25, especially when I'm paying $8. The second blazer I found was from the Anthro brand Daughters of the Liberation. Here is the tag. This is another older one, but it had a very interesting print to it, like this sea creature print jellyfish. So I thought, hey, maybe it's worth something. And when I checked comps on Poshmark, they were really all over the place. So another situation where I didn't want to sit on it for a year and a half to sell for $25 when I'm paying $8. I did happen to find one good blazer though. I found a crested Ralph Lauren blazer, which I have sold one of these in the past for like $60. I have this one listed at $97. I'm hoping for around the $60 range. It is a bigger size as well, so really hope that helps sell it. One thing I tend to do when I'm not having much luck in the women's section is venture over to the men's section. These Polo Ralph Lauren pajama pants were on sale, but I passed on them because they also just kind of looked like boxers to me, and I didn't want to buy used boxers. So, I don't know very much about men's clothes, only probably about the same amount of knowledge you may have if you're a women's clothing seller. But I did happen to find a few things in the men's section. I grabbed this Ted Baker polo for $7. Honestly, that's probably not the best pickup, but I was like, hey, Ted Baker, let me grab it. Here's a Footboy Foot Joy shirt that was $6. I probably would have grabbed it if it was half off because I know Foot Joy is like a decent brand, but I don't think it's worth paying $6 for it. Let me know if I'm wrong. Kaylee Elaine on YouTube is where I've recently learned some new good men's clothing brands to be on the lookout for, but still it's a category I don't know much about, so I don't tend to go over there. I liked this L.L. Bean men's shirt and I would have picked it up for buy, sell, trade if it was half off, but it was not. I'm pretty sure this was my only shoe find of the day. For $7, I grabbed these Cole Haan Zero Grand shoes. I don't think these do as well as they used to. I listed these at $39. I'm hoping for around $30. But this Goodwill got crazy with their pricing on shoes. So I was surprised to find those for only $7. Like, look, these random shoes, $20. These Nikes that were next to them, also $20. I just like this location went kind of crazy and started pricing their shoes in insanely uh these looked like nice shoes i didn't recognize the brand but again they wanted 20 dollars from and there wasn't like a spell out i couldn't look up the brand but they did feel like good quality something i probably would have grabbed at the bins to do more research on but not for 20 dollars who knows maybe they could have been good uh these were adidas i think i missed the price on those probably like 20 dollars right uh, tw no 13 I found this new with tags BTS cardigan and I was really excited and I was right to be really excited because it is official merchandise and BTS people are crazy. So if you don't know who or what BTS is, it is a Korean boy band and this is actually another one of those cardigans but it was missing the logo that the other one had and that was a super bummer because I grabbed this cardigan and ended up pricing it at $75. I do kind of wish I had grabbed this other one that was missing the logo because the buttons are still branded BTS and it is still new tags, official merchandise, they were $8. I'm like, I'm sure I could have sold that one for $30 with the missing logo. However, I left it behind, so I hope some ARMY found it. If you did not know BTS fandom, their name is ARMY, so uh, I hope they found it. This is a pair of Bionic men's sneakers for $15, so I left those behind for sure. I'm sure some of you are screaming at me because I'm complaining about the prices because your thrift stores are much higher, and I'm also sure some of you are like, what the heck, your thrift store is way too expensive. How do you even resell? So things like that have me questioning the sustainability aspect of reselling and by sustainable I mean how long can I do this as my full-time job in 10 years will this career still be around and the answer is I don't know and it's scary but I love it so I'm still doing it I found this cool vintage dress which gave me 70s vibes what's the brand called gunny sacks it gave me gunny sacks vibes but I couldn't find anything about it on the internet and I haven't had much luck selling vintage lately so I hope some super cool stylish girl found that dress. I would love to know why Goodwill thought these Shein pants were valuable enough to charge $10 and zip tie them. 
Anyway, here is my cart at the end of the day. So now we are moving on to some bonus footage. A couple days later at a different thrift store, I was with my sister. I grabbed those Jeffrey Campbell shoes and I actually sold them in about like 20 minutes of being listed only for $20. But man, that was a quick flip and I love that for me. So this is a different store than the one that we just saw, but it is four days after. So the middle of the week, the middle of the day in man, is it a noticeable difference? There was just so much more stuff. They got those weekend donations process it was quieter this was an anthropology i believe moth yeah sweater they wanted eight dollars for it and i passed on it because it's an older style and i didn't want it for eight dollars then oh my gosh i loved this print and i pulled it out and it's a j crew rainbow dress or shirt sure, shirt sure. new with tags ten dollars sadly i probably would have picked it up if it was cheaper but ten dollars just not a lot of room for profit i feel like half the stuff i find i say oh, i would pick it up if it was cheaper <laughs> lol i found this bowden sweater this was so exciting i love selling bowden this is definitely a newer piece with that uh yellow circle and they didn't have it priced up astronomically high my sister gave me this j crew dress which was half off of 10 so it was five dollars for a j crew dress that's not awful and it was a more recent style so i did get that one and get it listed and I actually have the only one listed so I'm glad it's not an oversaturated style. My sister gave me this Vineyard Vines half zip but I did end up passing on this one. I believe it was a kids XL and it was priced too high. I missed the price there though. I did think it was funny however that there is a real real tag on this so I don't know does the real real still accept Vineyard Vines? I saw this shirt and it was screaming reformation to me and it was not. It was Cynthia Rowley. It was 100% linen and I did really like the print so I considered it for a good moment. I asked my sister what she thought. Okay, would you get this for the print? For what? And it's linen in the print and it's, it's a extra large for seven. But for me? No, like in general. Oh yeah. I did end up passing on it just because I couldn't do $7 on it. Um, this Jay McLaughlin piece was $20. My Goodwill loves, at least this location is like, oh my god, Jay McLaughlin, that's the holy grail. We're gonna charge holy grail prices for it. Uh, so I have not bought Jay McLaughlin from that store in at least a year. Coming up here is another shirt I passed on because of price. It is this free people top. They had it priced at $8 and that was just too much because I'm assuming this will sell after like five plus months for $20. It's like cute, but you know, not cute enough. And then this is soft surroundings. They had priced at $10 and it was an extra small, which people always say their extra smalls don't do as well as the bigger sizes. Those are both pieces I would have loved to pick up at the bins because I have such a low cost of goods. At a about around a dollar that I can just list those and price them to move. So if I pay $8 for that free people top, I'm going to want to get at least $20. And that's like for $8, not good. So that's, I can't let it go for less than that. But if I get it at the bins and I pay a dollar, I can let it go for $13 and make a quick profit. Here is a brand I've actually never sold before. It is Allen Allen. I think, don't quote me, it can be sold at Nordstrom. But $5 for like a plain t-shirt. I did not want to experiment with it. So again, another bins pickup. Spiritual gangster. This used to be good and now it's crap. So $6 I considered it. I checked comps and it just was not even worth $6. Coming up here is maybe something I shouldn't have grabbed, but I did. Nanette Lepore swim. It's like a swim material cover up. It was $7. We are coming out of swim season, but I have sold some of these in the past for around $40. I mean, this was years ago, so who knows what these are worth now. I did check comms and I decided to grab it, so we'll see. I love selling Bowdoin, but I do not love selling their t-shirts, especially when I pay $8 for them. So pass on that. That is Michael Stars. I have not sold Michael Stars in a long time. It is like a higher retail brand, but it doesn't generally do well. Let me know if that is a brand that you actually do sell though. I saw this pair of Uggs above where I was shopping and I was like, oh, those look nice, but they had them priced at $20 and I didn't want to pay $20 for those. I probably would have grabbed them for like $8, probably not even $10. Those were like fake 
coach they had him priced at seven so pass no really good shoes today i think the only pair i grabbed were those jeffrey campbell's i showed you earlier in the video i know i said a few minutes ago vintage has not been selling for me but i could not leave this vintage top behind it had a metal zipper it was totally like 60s 70s print and so i grabbed it it didn't even have a price on it and then i think the cashier gave it to me i think he said six dollars which probably would have left behind for six dollars but i didn't at that point put it back i just bought it. I passed this really basic Eliza J dress for $8 and it was missing a belt. Here's a soft surroundings dress. I think, think yellow was the half off color. So it would have been five, but it was so pilled and like faded. There was, I wouldn't have even grabbed this at the bins. So left that behind. And also, right when I made it to this point, this lady came up behind me and started shopping right on top of me. I think she was a reseller. It was really annoying. I don't understand why people do that. Like, she wanted to be right where I was. So I skipped a section of dresses just to try and get away from her because it was crazy annoying. I found this Halara dress, which I thought was hilarious. They had a price at $10. The only reason I knew it was Halara was because it was new at tags. If you're wondering why I thought it was funny I found this dress, it's because I have 200 pieces of Halara I got in wholesale. I found this Ted Baker dress. I guess I accidentally filmed it in slow-mo. I did end up picking this up and I think I listed it around 60 something dollars. It's an older style but still a quality piece. Then coming up here I found a piece of Holding Horses Anthropology. It is this plaid dress here. They had a price at $8 and I didn't check comps but I'm just assuming it's not worth it. Again, something I'd probably only pick up at the bins because I just sold the Holding Horses pieces I had for months and it finally sold in June for like $15. It's just nobody wants that stuff. I grabbed this Jules dress because it was half off and I had sold it before pretty well like for around $30. Comps have definitely gone down since then so um, not something I would pay up for but I'd still pick it up at the bins. Also they make really cute rain boots and like i'd pick up their kids rain boots as well coming up is the maternity brand seraphine and i'd never found it before i believe i learned about this brand from mogi beth and i was super happy to find it for eight dollars because i thought it did amazing and well i can't complain too much because it sold the same day i listed it it only sold for 29 dollars. so now i know it's not a maternity brand to pay up for but it does actually do pretty well if you find it for the right price found these hoka flip-flops for four dollars and i couldn't say no because because they're Hoka flip-flops. And I actually haven't listed these yet because they accidentally got mixed in with my shoes. Oh my gosh, here I am trying to show you a clip of the lady that was like shopping on top of me. It was ridiculous. She like tried to follow me over. Like I left the dresses and came to a completely random section and she like was on top of me. Anyway, I thought these shoes were really cool. Like gave me very specific style vibes. Like Lolita would be one of the styles. Like grunge, dolls kill vibes, you know? And I was gonna grab them. I'm like, I can sell them myself or I could take them to buy, sell, trade. But then I realized it was missing an ankle strap. So that was a super bummer. My sister then asked me if I wanted a Vera Bradley lunchbox to sell, but I can't sell Vera Bradley that I get at the bins for like pennies to save my life. Nobody wants it. And I remember that being so hot when I was in elementary school and middle school. I loved my Vera Bradley lunchbox. Then my sister and I spent like 10 minutes looking through the plush and we found nothing. So that was a waste of time. I did find these AYR jeans that have some puckering, but I heard from Kaylee Elaine the brand does super well. They're also skinny jeans, so they have that going for them. Um, I did grab them just because I wanted to experiment with the brand, so if I can sell them quickly for, you know, $20 flawed, then maybe I can find a good pair and sell it for a lot. I don't love going through the jean section, but I will occasionally. I just feel like I don't find good stuff and it's usually priced too high these days. Here's a pair of Madewell for $9. Madewell jeans aren't what they used to be, so I passed on those skinny jeans. If they were a different style, you know, straight leg, whatever, kick boot flare, I would have looked them up. I got pretty excited to see these Levi's wedgie jeans. They were $10, which, you know, is getting up there because I don't think the wedgie's doing quite as well as it used to, but I liked the color. I liked the distress thing, and then I flipped it around and saw the back was all dirty. I don't know if that would have cleaned up, but for $10, I wasn't going to risk it. Found these Pilco and the letterpress jeans, new with tags, for $25. Thank you, Goodwill. Pass on those. I did end up grabbing these Levi's jean Bermuda shorts. They seem to be a good style. I got them listed 
posted right after I bought them because I really hoped they would sell at the tail end of the summer season. They have not sold yet. Found these Eileen Fisher pants and right next to that I found a pair of Mott & Beau pants. Mott & Beau I've only sold in men before and it's done well. So I grabbed both of those. We'll see how the Mott & Beau woman's does and always happy to find an Eileen Fisher pant. At this point, my sister was like, come on, let's go. We need to get out of here. And I was like, just one more minute. So I found these Pokro in the letterpress pants. Uh, they were half off, so they would have been $3.50. And honestly, I don't remember if I bought them or not. I think I might have bought them and put them in like my winter pile. These do not have that much going for them. They're skinny. They are at least high rise. Uh, yeah, I think I bought those and I probably shouldn't have. <laughs> Oops. Here's an old pair of Anthropology pants, Cartonier. They were $6, not on sale, like really old. I might have actually grabbed those at the bins because they weren't the ugliest style. I feel like somebody could make those cute. You could tag them like Dark Academia, which is what the teeny boppers are searching for these days. Okay, I'm all done. I've been out thrifting for almost two hours. Sorry, there's a dude right there and I'm trying to see if he's watching me. Anyway, uh, it's been almost two hours that I've been out. It was a pretty meh trip. Like, I should have stayed home. I know I should have stayed home just because, like, Tuesday. Saturday evening is not the best time to go thrifting. There's my yield. Pretty small amount for two hours. And even halfway through, I'm like, I can leave and go to last chance. But I couldn't get myself to leave. And I didn't find, like, anything amazing. You guys saw pretty much everything I bought. I'm happy to find the Patagonia for myself. And the BTS cardigan was pretty cool. I wish the other one wasn't flawed. But uh, I was like getting in the car. I'm like, I could still go to Last Chance. They close at 9. It's going to be 7. But I'm like, I should just go home and list. Which is honestly what we should do. Which is what we probably should all do is just go home and list. So I'm going to go home and list because I'm responsible-ish. I mean, I already went thrifting. <laughs> okay. I spent slightly under $100. So not too bad. Not every day is a great day. So. That is all for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. Feel free to do the stuff, like and subscribe if you want to, but nobody's forcing you to. And I will see you guys in another video soon. Goodbye.